Hey there everyone, Hafez here, back again with another video and welcome to another video on React Native. We're building our tic-tac-toe game, which is pretty fun, and also this reminds a little bit something interesting. See, attention is good. The more attention you get from the people who are in coding field or want to hire developers, it's a great idea always. Look at the tic-tac-toe. I searched this title on Hashnode and there are just four articles which showed up and it just re reached the end. So there is a high chance that if you have reached this far in the series, you should really write an article on React Native or building tic-tac-toe in React Native. And this is definitely going to get attention because there is nothing right now on Hashnode about the similar topic. So it's your chance to shine. Uh, so I'm pretty sure there will be only a handful of people who will reach this far in the series. If you have reached here, go ahead and write an article. This is good. And that is all they are asking. The entire series is sponsored by Hashnode. So this is a big shout out to them. Now in this video, we're going to work on a little bit of the logic part of the tic-tac-toe. I'll just uh, bring this logic into the screen itself, but I'll obviously walk you through that what it is happening. Once you understand the part, you'll see that, yeah, if you have watched the previous video, you will be able to write it. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. So first and foremost, what we're going to do is we are going to use a little bit of the array magic, which is this one. So once it says array.fill, 0, 2, and 4. So what it's saying, Fill with zero, so first value is what to fill. From position, that is a start position, and this is the end position. So the array is that is being given to you is one, two, because the array was one, two, obviously. And then it produces zero and zero. So this is how it works. If it says that, hey, I want to start with zero, and I go ahead and run this, the first array that produces is all zeros. If I go ahead and say that, hey, instead of the zero, I don't want it to be filled up with the zero, I literally want a simple string that says empty. And if I run this, all the values are being filled up with the empty. This is exactly what we are about to use in our tic-tac-toe app as well. So just a quick JavaScript reminder for those who are still struggling in JavaScript. I do have a series. It's free on YouTube. You can try this out. So we'll be going into app.tsx and we'll be working it through. So quite a lot of things are there. And uh, yes, cleanup is required. Let's go ahead and remove this part. We don't need this. We don't need this. We definitely know, don't need this. And uh, props with children, we have already taken care in another component. This is we can get rid. And this part, don't need it. And in the return, the status bar is good, but we are not worried about this part. Not this part either. Scroll view can be removed entirely. And instead of this, we can just have a simple view so it doesn't yell. And we'll be having a simple text that says tick tack toe with hash node and Hitesh. There we go. Nice and simple. Okay, a uh, style sheet I'll definitely provide you in a minute, just like I always do. But here we'll be installing the snack bar first. So let's go ahead and just look for it on the online so that how we can actually have the snack bar. Uh, so let's go ahead and work on with this. Snack bar for React Native. Let's just search for it. And React Native snack bar dialog. Mm, not probably. We are just looking for a core React Native snack bar. So it's better if I search it on Google. Uh, I'm just looking for a React native snack bar. Yep, that's exactly. And that is exactly I'm looking up for. All I have to do is copy. If the internet is allowing me, copy this. Go back up here, paste it up. There we go. Really simple. Snack bar doesn't have much. We have already studied its documentation as well. That is pretty easy to understand. All you got to do is snack bar dot show. Couple of parameters, duration, text. There is a lot more durations and everything that you can actually go ahead and work on with. We won't be doing that much, just a tiny bit of that. Okay, let's first import all the things that we are going to need up here. So let's use here, it's good enough. Let's go ahead and say, I want to have snack bar just like that. I will also need the components. So let's go ahead and say, I want to import the icons. There we go. Now, once the icons and everything are done, I'll go inside the app and I need some states to be there. Now, we don't need to have states for both cross, cross and uh, the, the zeros or the circles. We can just have one and based on that, we can actually predict another one. If it is not the cross, it's obviously O's. So we can just go with that. So let's just go ahead and say uh, we are declaring an array which says is cross. 
and then obviously set is cross there we go and what we're going to do is simply have a use state just like this and here we are going to provide a default value of false there we go this is all good but additionally what you can do is make it a little bit type safe so you can go up here using a little bit typescript here and we can go ahead and mention the boolean value so it should always be boolean uh spoiling uh securing us from not mentioning the string false or something like that similarly we also need to cap keep a track of when the game is being won by somebody so we'll keep a track of this one as well uh, so we'll say game winner and of course set game winner this is something that we have to check on every iteration and there is some optimization you can do that we don't need to check for first and second but that's the edge cases you can definitely go ahead and work on with that we'll simply go ahead and say use state again uh, this time we'll be saying that this will be of type string because it can be and there we go so this is all what we have as of now two states that we are keeping a track of this now we need to create a simple game state so uh, let's just keep a track of the game state as well that where it is right now so let's declare another one as well const need to space out a little bit and we'll be saying that game state and then we can have set game state all right once this is there now we want to use a simple use state in here as well but this time we don't want to manually put the value we'll simply use this array method that we studied just right now and in that we'll be saying hey i want to have an array with nine position into it because tic-tac-toe nine three by three you get the idea and i want to use a method of fill just like this and we saw what are the three values it requires so what is the value that you want to fill we just saw that we want to have an empty you can use any other values as well there is no problem we want to start from position zero and we want to fill it till the all the value till the nine so there we go now we have a game state we can reset that state at any point of time as well but we are keeping a track of this one so these are the things that are all there we'll start with the very basic that how we can reload the game reloading the game is pretty simple we have to make sure that all the values get back to default so state should be uh, like the is cross should be false game winner should be empty and the game state should be initial state so let's go ahead and work on with that so we'll be saying that how the reload game works it should be a method so declaring it like this there we go the logic is pretty simple reset all this so we'll be using just one method so first is cross and we'll be mentioning it as false step one done who is the game winner nobody so set game winner is nobody so empty string step two done step three the last one is set game state we'll be going again with same let's have a new simple array we'll be using an array method for nine values in that we'll be having a fill fill takes three values the first one what do you want to fill we will be saying empty from what position you want to start zero what position you want to go till nine there we go so I told you this is the pretty easy logic of this one now next thing that we have to do is that is the tricky one is to we have to check on keep on checking actually this method which is game winner so let's go ahead and check is winner so how we're going to go ahead and check the winner now i have mentioned this in the video as well that i recommended you in the past video as well that all we have to do is keep on check whether the same value the crosses are there in all the rows so three rows need to be checked three columns need to be checked and also in the diagonally way so this is all what we are going to do so let me just hit it z and i have all this logic up here as well so i'm going to go ahead and paste this i'll show you what we have done here so that you actually work on with this so what we are doing is first we are checking whatever the value is at the position zero is it equals to position one also so we are first tracking the row so position zero is e is it equals to position one also if the position zero is also equals to position two and if the zero position that we are checking is not empty because otherwise empty is obviously it's the start of the phase so it should not be empty but if the position zero is equals to one and the position uh, zero is also equals to position two we have checked the first row similarly we have to check the second row then the third row similarly we have to check for column 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 so whatever their position are 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have to go diagonally as well. This is exactly what I've mentioned in that. Uh, yes, it takes a little bit time, uh, but again, it's not really something that is complex to understand. Lengthy to write? Yes, I agree on that part. So this is all what we have done is how we are going to go ahead and check the winner. A uh, little bit trivial, but this is this is important. All right. So we'll just minimize this entire piece of code and this is how we are checking for the winner. Again, once the winner is being checked, we are setting the state the game winner is. Whatever the position is here, uh, we are just checking that, hey, you have actually won the game. Okay, now, this is the checking of the winner. This is the reloading of the game. But we haven't learned or we have implemented the functionality. When somebody click on that icon, what we are going to do, like how we are going to change its icon. That is what we have to learn next or we have to write next. Okay, that is the final functionality. I think so, almost. Okay, let's go ahead and work on with that. So this one will be on change item. Okay, so how we're going to work with that. First of all, somebody need to pass on me that what item am I clicking on? Obviously, we can keep a track of this via flat list and variety of other looping methods. So somebody needs to pass on me this. So we'll be having this item number. Somebody will give it to me. This will be in the format of number. Without this, of course, we don't know at what position we have to change something. All right. So first and foremost, before changing it, we want to really check whether the game is being won or not. So we'll be, we can easily check it by game winner. Now notice here, we actually created a state game winner. This is right now empty. Uh, but actually we are setting this straight when we are checking is winner. So if this is being set to something like, hey, this is being won, if it is being set, that means game has already been won by somebody. If it is empty, that means we can actually still continue. So if game is being won, we are going to simply return a simple snack. So let's go ahead and work with the snack bar dot show and provide it with all the options that it requires. The first one, of course, being is the text. Uh, we have already set the text in the check is winner method. So we'll be just uh, putting that here. So we'll be saying uh, game winner. There we go. And background colors and all of that. So we'll be going absolutely classic on that. First one is background. Oh, my bad. Shouldn't be like that. It should be comma. Background color. We'll be going, let's go with all white. So we'll be saying or all black. Zero, 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 zero. All right. Next up, we can simply have the text color. So we'll go with all white in this case. So we'll be going like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So this is the part when somebody has already won the game. Now, we have to determine what if the game is not being won by somebody. In that case, I'll simply come up here and let's check if it is already being filled or not. So we'll check something like this. We'll say that, hey, whatever your game state is, remember the game state that we have is an array. So we have to check what is the current value in that game state. So if the game state at whatever the item number that you have provided, you have provided me a position. And if that is empty, then only I'll change. Otherwise, if it is circle or some cross, I cannot work on that. I cannot replace that value. So I'll simply go ahead and say equal and I'll say empty just like this, okay? In this condition only, I can go ahead and change the value. So what we're going to change, uh, simply I'll select the game state. And at that exact position where the item number is being provided to me, I'll simply go ahead and see uh, is cross. So is cross is a state. Let me remind you again. Is cross is a state which is false or true. Okay. So if is cross is true, then obviously it's a turn of cross. So I'll just mark it as cross. If it is false, then obviously it's a tie, it's a turn of circle. So I'll just go ahead and work on with that. So this is the way we are keeping a track of whose turn it is. Really simple, nothing complex. Let me explain it one more time. Simply we are checking in this method that, hey, provide me an item number. We have a grid. Wherever I'm clicking, there will be a method which will be provide me what is the position there. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever that is. If somebody gives me a check that it is not a winner, then I'm simply checking if the game state is empty. Because remember, we are providing empty as a default state. If it is empty, then only I can click on it and run the game. So if the game state is empty, then I'll jump into it and then I'll check what is my state. Because on every click, we are going to go ahead and change this state is cross. We'll be keep on flipping it. False, true, false, true. Now, if the state is false, then obviously it's a turn of cross. 
otherwise it's a turn off circle that's how we are going you can go ahead and reverse it as well but we are going with the basic one that how the game is being designed okay now if this is the case that means this turn has been done by somebody but at least now we need to flip the switch as well yeah that's most important don't forget that that's really simple we are going to simply say set uh, is cross just select that one and reverse that so whatever the value previously was it i'll just go ahead and work on with the is cross there we go we have flipped the switch now in case of else else consists of all the cases whether it was a cross whether it was a circle so we don't have to explicitly find out that which one it is if it is already cross or if it is already circle you cannot play it so it should be a snack bar so let's go ahead and simply go ahead and say return it should be a snack bar dot show and we can provide some of the objects that it requires first of all text uh, with something that position is already filled and then comma again background color we can go ahead and say with black let's go with the black or we can go with the red yes you can manually type it not a good idea but you can go ahead and manually type it as well and we'll be going for the text color as well i'll go with the white in this one so i'll just say uh, you can just go ahead and <laughs> change this one as well now once this is done uh, what you have to do is you have to come out of this now notice here we are checking if the game is winner but once somebody has actually clicked on it then obviously we have to evaluate whether this guy has won or not so in this case we will be using this check is winner so all you have to do is come up here check is winner now your winner is evaluated again that's nice all right so this is what we have done uh, so far so all the logic part of the tic-tac-toe is done now what we have to do is we have to simply create a flat list which will be simply a block three by three uh, nothing too complex in the next video i'll give you the style sheet as well so that you don't have to worry too much about the styling and all this is being done we'll be just minutely working on the flat list and all of that this will be a quick revision of flat list as well and we'll be working through i hope you are enjoying this series a lot of effort is going into this series uh, it would be really amazing and nice to see that this this effort is being appreciated by sharing the series on linkedin or on youtube or on instagram wherever you like it tweet about it it takes a lot of effort a team effort uh, that we are putting in so please it would be really great if you hit that subscribe and share the series otherwise no problem we'll keep on working hard that's it for this video let's keep uh, working and move on to the next video